Hi guys, it's Elaine here, the Animal Reiki Lady, coming to you live today from beautiful Colorado. And this particular video is actually going to go out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So hello to everybody, every one of you, every one of those places has a different following. So greetings to you all who's ever catching me live. I'm actually getting ready to go to the gym right now. And it never fails that I get inspired either at the gym or I've just done a little yoga session. So that inspired me. Um, and I just had so much fun with that. So uh, I, when I when I get the inspiration, I go live. So here we go. I'm just putting on my tennies right now after getting uh, getting through my yoga session. And um, I just do yoga here in my own room. I have this little yoga space that is so comfortable. And we are just hanging out for just a moment or two while the notice goes out on all the platforms that I have gone live. Um, so we'll see if we can get anybody to join me. It is early morning here in Colorado. Um, it's, a, mm, yeah, not quite 8 o'clock. Maybe it's just about 8 o'clock. Um, and hello, who's ever joining me live? It's good to see you. I love to say hi. So wherever you are, whether it is YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Um, I love to have comments and I love to say hi and I reply to everybody. Um, at least I try to. Every once in a while I'm, I might miss somebody. But what are we going to talk about today? Um, we are going to talk about being a reverse empath and what does that mean? So for those of you who may be catching this for the first time, my name is Elaine. I am the Animal Reiki Lady, and I, um, I'm an Animal Reiki Master and Teacher. And I just got done a great class this past weekend where I led a Level 1 Animal Reiki class. And that's where a lot of this comes from when I think about all the things that, um, that we connected with as we practice Reiki. What I do is practice a very specific form of Reiki. It's called the Let Animals Lead Method of Animal Reiki. It was designed by my animal Reiki teacher, Kathleen Prasad, and it's based in the fact that we share compassion and love, and that is what heals us, what heals animals, and healing is a loaded word. Um, it's not about fixing anything. Um, it's about actually tapping into the energy of our heart and this heart space and using our love to help shift the rebalance, um, shift release the stress, excuse me, <clears throat> of the animals that we work with, and people too, but my practice happens to be animals. And what I realized recently is that I started saying using the word empath, and there are some, a lot, there are a lot of people out there who consider themselves to be empaths, and an empath is when you feel so intensely the emotions of another. And sometimes it's disabling, so people who are true empaths pick up the emotions of every living thing around them and it becomes, um, it becomes disabling, so it's hard to manage all of those emotions. And I consider myself not an empath in that way, but I recognize that I'm an, 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 an empath, say that 10 times fast. I am an empath in a completely different way, and this is what Reiki has opened up for me. And when I think about what Reiki means, sharing compassion, universal energy, universal spirit, that love that surrounds everything. And hello, everybody who's joining me live. Thanks so much for jumping on. Um, as, as I mentioned earlier, don't hesitate to um, put your comments in below and let me know where you're, let me know where you're um, watching from. So where were we before I interrupted myself? Talking about the compassion of Reiki. So Reiki is about, uh, especially when we share with animals, it's about opening our heart space and being incredibly compassionate, accepting animals, people, every living thing, just as they are. We view them as perfect. And what I have come to learn about being an empath is that I am, I call it a reverse empath. I have no other word for it. So if anybody wants to jump in with another word for being a reverse empath, instead of taking on the emotions of others, I share with them mine. When I open my heart space, uh, we do this meditation, a very specific meditation. It's called the Hara meditation. And your Hara, it's, it's your core, right? So it's, it's this thing right here. Yeah, yeah that right there. <laughs> your Hara is your core. And what I do when I go into a meditation is I open my mind. And I know the M word, meditation, people freak out about the M word. Meditation can be anything. It's about quieting your mind just a little bit and opening your heart space. And what I do with animals, specifically animals who have been injured, they're ill, uh, terminally ill or aging, animals who are in captivity, animals who have been in rescues or sanctuaries, so they've been in, in situations of abuse or neglect. Those are the primary animals that I work with. And hello, it's good to see you guys. Um, I 
go into a meditation where I quiet my mind, I just focus on my breathing, and then I focus on my heart. And I feel like I pull in all the love of the universe right into my heart space, and then I lower it into my core. I just like pull it deep inside me and that let it expand. I imagine that it's this beautiful mist. Um, hi, Fiona, it's nice to see you. Um, I imagine that the love is this beautiful mist that I extend outside my body. And I just let it flow and grow and flow and grow. And I imagine the mist just goes on and on and on. And depending on which meditation, on how many animals I'm working with, or if I'm working with no animals in particular, I just let it go out to every living thing. But if I happen to be working with a very specific animal, if you guys could see my dog right now, he is hilarious. He's laying on the bed, spread eagle, as I look over there, completely relaxed. When I start to do Reiki, he like totally chills. Anywho, <laughs> so what I then do is open that space of love for all living things and I invite them to join me in that space of love. So that if an animal, let's just, we're gonna pick an animal who's in captivity. Um, I went to two different animal sanctuaries last week in Florida, and it was amazing to share Reiki with those animals in captivity. And so what I would do is open that space of love, and they're stressed, that's a stressful environment for them. Imagine yourself being stuck in a cage. Um, even if it's a big cage, even if it's a, even if it's a large enclosure, you're still captive. And so I open this space of love and I project to them this space of love. I project love to them. So it's like reverse empath. I ask them to take on the feeling of love, to let go of the stress, to let go of the anxiety, to let go of any fear, confusion, and instead embrace the love. So that's why I call it reverse empathy. They can take on my emotion. I create the space for them. I create the emotion for them and just allow it to flow to them and it relaxes the entire environment. Um, there were two of us that went to these sanctuaries last week. Um, Kayla, um, Kayla, who you may have seen on, she may even be on this right now, I can't tell. Um, myself and Kayla went to these sanctuaries and we didn't do anything special. We didn't, um, we didn't like sit down and, and go into meditation. It was more of a walking meditation. We just opened our heart and let it flow, just turn the love on. I mean, like turn, turn on, what's the ET, right? The movie, we turned on our heart space. Hi, Kayla, I thought, yeah, I thought I saw you pop on. Um, we just turned on our heart space and began walking from enclosure to enclosure and sharing this space with the animals and the sense of peace that penetrated both sanctuaries, it, it, was, it, was, in, it was almost too hard to explain when everything gets quiet, when not a sound can be heard, when they completely relax. Um, it's just a very, very, it's, a, it's healing for us too. We felt just as much power. So when we open that heart space and share love with those animals, reverse empathy, they then share it right back. It's like everybody joins in. They sense the love. They let go of all that stress. They let go of all that anxiety and it creates a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful conditions for healing. So that's why Reiki works so well with animals. Uh, they can't speak to us, they can't vocalize, they can behave in certain ways that express the stress they're feeling, sometimes human-induced stress. Um, the stress that comes from being neglected or abused, the stress that comes from an illness or an injury that's causing them pain, the stress that comes from them being on the verge of transition, the confusion that comes with some of that, and instead of being an empath who takes on all those emotions and then can't do anything with them, we do the reverse. We use Reiki to share love with them and it allows all that other stuff to just float away, just floats right away. And as reverse empaths, we help them create balance and then their body can do what it naturally does. So I, I do focus a lot on, on animals who are transitioning, animals who are ready to cross, there's confusion that comes there and I work with their human companions and them to help ease that and to help make it a much more peaceful transition. Um, but it's the same type of thing. What I do is open the space of love, remind them who they are, allow the pain to subside by rebalancing. And then they can, they just open their, their when their heart opens, their connection to the other side just, just really opens as well and it helps them ease that transition. But that's a whole topic for another time. I just really wanted to share this piece about being a reverse empath and what Reiki is and how Reiki creates that space that allows their negative emotions to dissipate 
and all of the positive love to flow in. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, this is going to be on all three platforms. So it's Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I love to hear questions. And let me just see. Hi, Jane. How you doing? I see a Jane joining me. Kayla, Fiona, it is so nice to see you all. Um, and I will be back again soon. I'm going to be I'm doing another... Um, we're going to be doing a live stream on the on the student group. The uh, in my animal Reiki ambassadors, we're going to be talking about something that Kayla brought up, which is um, letting go of expectations. This has come up all week long. The expectations that we hold of our animals, the expectations we hold of their human companions, the expectation we hold of Reiki, and how we let that go. So that'll be on my ambassador page, and um, and then on the Rainbow Bridge support group. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about how we can help animals transition in, in it without all of the grief and guilt and remorse and anxiety that just makes it that much harder for them to easily cross. All right. Thank you for joining me, guys. Have a great, amazing Friday. Uh, yeah, Friday the 13th, if you guys did not know, is a day of good fortune. Um, it was completely misconstrued way back in like the 14th or 15th century um, when women were recognizing how to come into their power. And um, so Friday the 13th was actually, it's a day of power for women, especially in our cycle. And um, it got squashed um, in order to, to hold us down and let us not step into our power. So don't ever take this as a day of, of something to be feared. Take it as a day of something to be lived in its fullest every day, to, to be lived to the fullest. Um, and so I am sharing with you my beautiful sense of Reiki, love and compassion, peace, hoping that you have an amazing day. From me and every animal in all the universe, love you so much. Take care, guys. Bye.